Hey, everybody. Uh, I wanted to show you how I make my Sierra wine cups, also known as Cuscas, and which is a Scandinavian wooden cup. The first time I saw one of these being made, I was in Norway at a wood turning function, and the gentleman was out carving the interior here. And I thought to myself, man, if he had a lay, that job would be done in a split second. And uh, sure enough, I got home and I started making a bunch of these, and I've made hundreds over the years. <laughs> Uh, these are great gifts, uh, and also um, if you if you could sell them and make a profit on them, let me know because they've been vows of poverty for me. Anyway, um, let me take you through the process of how I make them, and keep in mind, I'm going to show you the safest way. You can most certainly cut out a piece of wood just like this and save yourself uh, a lot of wood as compared to the way I show you. The reason I don't like to do it like this is this little handle is going to be flipping around uh, while you haul that out, and it's really easy to wrap your knuckles on that uh, while you work. And I uh, most certainly know that through experience. Check out the process here. Well, basically, I'm going to start out with an eight inch diameter piece of wood that's roughly two and a half inches. Now, you can make them any size that you like. Um, I felt that this size is good, good for all around. It's not uh, oversized and you can put it on your belt and it's not going to really cause you much trouble. There you go. Two and a half inches. This is a piece of soft maple, box elder, also known. Uh, I put it on a screw center. Tail stock up and I just round it up. That's all I do. I don't take off a lot of material here. Uh, flatten off the bottom. Now, I'm just marking where the tenon goes. Uh, you don't have to do this. If you're good at making tenons, uh, you don't have to mark it. Again, this is just uh, for tutorial purposes. Now I'm going to flip it over. Then we're going to face off the, the front of the cup here, the top of the cup. Now, this is two and a half inches there. Um, you, uh, uh, like I said, you can make it any size you like, but uh, two and a half is going to be good. And you're going to open it up a little bit with some carving. This is a three eighths inch bowl gouge. And I'm going to use a drill bit here to go two and a half inches deep as a depth finder. Hopefully you do a better job of finding center than I did there. Um, now I'm going to stop right here. Notice what I'm doing here. I'm kind of opening up the cup to give it some volume. Let's stop right there and I'll, I'll draw on the cup there. I'm trying to kind of hollow it out a little bit with my gouge. Now I round nose scraper uh, to finish up. And sometimes this can ruffle up the grain and tear it a little bit. So that just means you're going to sand a little bit more. It'd be nice if you didn't have to use it, uh, but um, I use it on this in this case. Uh, start with 120. I'm going to sand the in interior of the cup. I'm going to go all the way to 320. Now, um, let's make a template just out of a, a piece of cardboard. This is three and a half inch circle there, two and a half inch long handle. It's one inch thick. Now let's uh, make sure that when we put this on top of our blank, that the end grain is running in this direction here. That'll, that'll make sure that the handle is strong. Trace it out, and then we're going to take it over to the bandsaw. There we go. Now the rest is just carving pretty much and drilling and uh, a, little, a lot of sanding. Uh, those little holes there are going to be where we're gonna put our fingers in the cup. Um, and if you're smarter than me, you put this in a vise and, and do this job, but uh, that's just a one inch uh, spade bit. And uh, let's go ahead and cut through those. 
notice I've left a couple holes there in the back so you know where those holes are going to be. Make sure you don't make that too thin because you're going to be carving things away and uh, you, you got to keep that structure there. Otherwise, uh, you'll make the, the areas weak. And this is just design. You could choose a different design. I, you know, I recommend that you keep with this on your first couple, but you'll, you'll soon, if you make a bunch, you'll find different ways and uh, uh, that might suit you better. This is for the leather strap, by the way. Now, this is just a, a little spindle sander that I made with 36 grit sandpaper. It's just a piece of wood that I strapped uh, uh, 36 grit sandpaper to. It's pretty aggressive and uh, that'll do the bulk of it. And then I got an 80 grit disc here and that's my drill press. And then I'm gonna smooth out the rest of the cup with this and then eventually get to 220, maybe some 320. Um, now, uh, there's a couple of items that we're going to need. Um, and after we get done sanding this, we're gonna need a couple of tools and hopefully you have a Fordham uh, or any other spinning uh, tool die system. And this is my Fordham here. Let me stop sharing here for a second. So this is a burr that I really like. It's just kind of like a teardrop shape and it's uh, really versatile. But if you're more adept at carving, you may know a better burr for you to do this cup. And then this is a little padded spindle uh, sander that you just strap sandpaper around and that'll get into the fingers and some other tight areas on the cup. Really will make a nice detail uh, area for your cup. You can see I'm carving some little uh, areas there for your fingers to make it smoother, ergodynamic, as they say. Working on the spigot there. Uh, that's for obviously this cup is for a right hander. You could make them for left handers, or you could you don't need the spigot at all. Here's our little spindle sander. That's got a little three inch disc uh, of sandpaper in there that works fine. Usually uh, slow up my RPMs for this job here. The tool's fairly benign, but uh, you don't want that sandpaper flying off and hitting you. Always wear your, your safety glasses. Then I'm gonna hand sand the rest, all the way to 320. And that's kind of our finished cup. So a lot of carving, a lot of sanding, uh, very little turning, but uh, like I said, this makes a beautiful gift. And uh, I would recommend no finish on my cups. Um, this particular one is too white. And uh, so I put a little walnut oil on there and it really pops the grain. Um, it would be really nice if you if you used a wood that didn't um, um, leak. So it's gotta be relatively close pour woods that you do this with. There's my leather strap. Now I'll just show you a quick gallery of some cups I've made. These, uh, these were a mistake actually, they're beautiful. Um, the mistake was they were cottonwood and liquid um, uh, drips out of the wood. And what did I do to fix that? I put polyurethane on the interior of the cup and that stopped the, the moisture loss. So um, it would be, like I said, be nice if I used a wood that did not leak, but you can't help for the beauty of this wood. That's a piece of ash. And ash is open pour, but it held water. Sycamore holds water nicely. Another piece of ash. Different handle there, as you can see. Uh, these are cottonwood again. Very organic looking. I think they're very nice. Maple on the left. Bristol comb pine on the right. I was very fortunate uh, to get some bristol comb pine and work with it. There, there they are again. Well, thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope you uh, make some of these and uh, enjoy the process. Bye.